Hey everybody, this is Pastor Chris coming to you live from Lexington Park Baptist Church. This is PC Studios, and it is July the 20th, 2021. How in the world are you doing today? Let's get our tunes on. Let's get ready to do word of encouragement. There you go. Hey, I hope um, you enjoyed some of those grooves as you were waiting to get on. We're out here on Caster. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on Twitch. We're on our website at lpbconline.org. But if you want to be live with us right now, you need to come to facebook.com slash Pastor Chris McCombs. And you can look at the other Facebook and YouTubes for Chris McCombs, our Lexington Park Baptist Church. So good to see you here. A little advertisement, Lexington Park Baptist Church. We're in the middle of vacation Bible school. Man, Vacation Bible School is amongst us here at Lexington Park Baptist Church. And I don't know about you, but I had a great night last night. Pastor Construction was here. I'm wearing all my VBS shirts from the past uh, today. You know, I've got this as the first one. I think it was the swimming one, right? Uh, we, I had my scuba gear on. This year I got my construction gear on. And uh, maybe you've seen some pictures online. I've been preaching about building and there's construction sets out and the kids are learning all kinds of things. So what I want to do the rest of this week is I want to focus on that. I want to focus what we're doing each night with the kids, letting the audience know some of you are participating. And if you're participating, log in and say, hey, I love VBS. Go ahead, Todd, write it in. I love VBS. I love VBS. Um, I love VBS too. And maybe you can support VBS through prayer. Maybe you can uh, support VBS through participation. Maybe you can uh, support VBS through, through provisions. You know, whatever you can do, you know, you can... Yeah, provisions you can get financially, you can participate, um, you know, you can pray, you can do all three, you can do a combination of them, but I want to encourage you to be a part of it. So listen, Vacation Bible School takes a big thrust out of any church that does it right. And I go back and forth on this. It should be outreach oriented, but it's also disciple oriented. And so we got to do what's best for the community in which we live and the community of believers that we have. And I think this year I heard a lot of uh, some, some of the volunteers, and I know Melissa's out there. I don't think Carrie's there, but I think I saw Melissa. Uh, I want to just shout out to Carrie and Melissa for leading us. Thank you all for what you're doing. You want a mug? You know what, Melissa? See Hallie. She'll get you one of these, okay? Um, so I think doing it at night, has created some obstacles. Some kids go to bed early. I don't. Parents won't budge on that, and and that's a parental decision. But many are willing. Hey, it's vacation Bible school. We're here to eight. It's okay, and it is okay. Listen, at Broadman, we used to go to nine o'clock, and kids wouldn't get home to nine thirty and ten, and they loved it. Uh, only complaint I would ever get is they're so pumped up going home, and then you know. But anyway, um, I get that. Respect that. Parents got to make a decision. Uh, but I had volunteers come up to me. So Melissa, hear this. I had. Uh, Matt uh, Hayes and I had um, I had um, Tina Tina uh, Dow come up to me and they're like I'm so glad I never get to work vacation Bible school but because of my work right but here I am and I'm able to serve this year because it's at night and so I don't you know COVID kind of changed things we had to be creative and and stuff so anyway all that to say this is. I'm glad we're doing it. We've got some families here I've not seen before. I see some outreach orientation going on. Um, more than discipleship. I don't know how many kids are from other church. You know, I'm going to have to weed through all that with Melissa. Um, but we've got a good show. I think, Melissa, we had around 74, 75 last night. I think we got over 80-some kids that are registered. So I'm hoping, you know, you know, I don't know how that compares to other years, but I think we're doing pretty good considering covid Considering the transition, I'm, I'm loving to see the volunteers. I see some new leaders, some new volunteers that have not been here. I think that's because we're doing it at night. And I'll be honest, I don't think we could have pulled this off during the day. I don't think we would have had the volunteer base. I don't even know. I, we might have got more kids, maybe, maybe not. Um, but we definitely had the volunteer base issue. So I'm glad that we're trying something different and creative. And I want to thank all the leadership structure. I want to thank everyone for what they're doing. And, I, and it's a team effort. And I think when I look at VBS, it's Team Jesus. It's, it's the church truly coming together to do something great, to pull something great off in one week that's amazing. 
Doreen from the decorations and you've seen the pictures. What an amazing transformation of our sanctuary. The reason we have it up for three weeks is, I'll just be honest with you, we put all that work into it. Let's enjoy it, right? Let's transform our sanctuary into something fun for, for three weeks. I mean, we can do that. And we're going to have the play at the end. You do not want to miss Sunday. I'm going to preach the gospel on the cornerstone, but we're also going to have the skit. And we've got, uh, we've got some great actors that are going to be in this thing. We've got some, some great lines uh, from Abigail Sandberg to Savannah McCombs to, uh, to Logan to Brian Bain to Pastor Joe to, 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 Sandy, to Sandy Wheeler. we got all kinds of people. Greg Pegg back on the, on the soundboard. James Polanowski is going to be around the camera. We're going to have a great team Sunday bringing a great production, sharing the gospel, and pulling VBS week all together in one thing. So I'm looking forward to that. So let's do this. What is our theme? Our theme this year, and not our, our motto is Jesus, our strong foundation. So that's our motto, Jesus, our strong foundation. And that's what I've been preaching on. If you're a Christian, you know that. So Philippians 1, 6, I am sure, Paul says, I'm sure of this. So in other words, when Paul does that, he does it a few times in scriptures. I'm certain of this. I'm sure of this. Um, you know, it, it's, it's of the utmost importance, right? So he's saying, I am sure of this. I have confidence that he who has started a good work in you will carry it on until completion, until the day of Christ Jesus. So what Jesus begun in our lives, if we know Jesus, right? What Jesus started in us, he's going to finish it. Jesus is the foundation of our lives. Jesus is the cornerstone. Jesus is the master architect. Jesus has a purpose and a blueprint for your life and my life. And Jesus wants to build something. Now, we can sometimes get in the way. Um, maybe we get in the way of the permits. You know, maybe we get in the way of the progress. Maybe we get in the way of the provisions. Maybe we get in the way by our stubbornness and by our sin and by our temptations and by all kinds of things. Our just I'm going to be hard-hearted. I'm just not going to, you know, be obedient. Uh, we can mess up things. We can delay things. We can make it difficult for ourselves for Christ to work. But if Christ is in you, he has begun a good work in you. And what's that good work? Salvation. What's that good work? Sanctification. What's that ultimate good work? No matter what happens is glorification. So God wants to move us through the regeneration of salvation, where you've been regenerated, reborn. <laughs> he wants to go through a process of sanctification, renewal processes, the new creation, making you more into the image of God, making you more like Jesus. And that's really the hard work. And then we get to someday, the final step of Jesus is the glorification, where we're, we're like Jesus, we share in his glory, we'll be with him forever. And that is the final work that God has for us. So may we rejoice in this Jesus, our strong foundation. May we rejoice in this text. We'll go to this each day. But I want to look at the first two days of what we've done. Tomorrow I'll talk about the third day only. And then we'll go into, um, on Thursday, I'll cover the last two days. So let's do this. So day one, they, we should have been at least what, what the... What, what we're trying to emphasize in Worship Rally, and I'm not sure what all the teachings are uh, in, the, in the books. I know Kathy and Ray are doing that, so thank you, Kathy and Ray. I don't know if you're out there, but thank you for teaching and what you do. We appreciate you teaching all the kids this year. Thank you to all the preschool workers, too, different dimensions, different areas, but thank you for everyone that's teaching, doing missions, doing crafts, doing recreation, you know, um, doing Worship Rally, Shawnetta. And Savannah up there, you know, snack time, missions, Terry Hayes, you know, all those people, just so many people doing so many great things. Thank you. So Jesus chose Matthew. So there's a foundation for our love. And um, if you, you know, if you go to Matthew chapter nine, you read nine through 13. And this is when Jesus chose Matthew to be his disciple. So Jesus chooses to love us no matter what. We don't earn it. So... <clears throat> No matter what you do, Jesus has chosen you. Now, I don't want to get into predestination and chosen, and we all, probably all of us in this audience even today ha have differing opinions on this, but Chris McCombs' take on it is we're free, but we're chosen. It's true. We both have free will, but we're also chosen in God's sovereignty. And so, but God chose Matthew specifically. And uh, it's his divine prerogative, right? 
and to choose who he would choose to follow him. And it's his divine intervention in our lives that leads us to salvation. And, and we know that he desires all would not perish, but some in their free will will reject God's sovereignty over their life and will choose to live their own way. Um, but God ultimately chose in this situation, Matthew, to be his disciple. If you are a follower of Jesus, he has chosen you. You're his chosen people. We're his chosen people. Let's never take that for granted. Let's believe in that. And this is one of the foundations that the kids are being taught. They're being taught, at least in, in worship rally and the things that we're teaching through the music, because I have the, the worship rally book here, is we're teaching them that God chose them, that God loves them, and they can earn it. I think that's why we sang Remain in His Love was the song of the day uh, yesterday is we were choosing to remain in my love. Um, now, today, we're going to move to a new song. We're going to still sing Concrete and Cranes, and we're going to sing Remain in My Love. Um, but we're going to move on to talk about the foundation of our forgiveness in Acts chapter 26, 1 through 29. So that's tomorrow. Jesus loves me regardless of my sin. That is the theme we're going to talk about tonight. Yesterday, Jesus chooses to love me. I can't earn it, and that's grace. So thinking about this love that now tonight we're going to talk about leads to this forgiveness. And, you know, these kids may be little, and maybe it's easier for us adults maybe to comprehend that concept. But I, I want to encourage you, however we can do it to these kids, because some of these kids are hardened kids. They're, some might come from broken families. Um, some may, may be struggling with all kinds of issues in their life that we, we're just not aware of. Um, they may not fully comprehend this issue of sin yet, maybe not fully, but we know that sin problems in their life. So it's our job not to, not to reveal their problems to them, but to reveal the love of Christ for them and that God does love them and chooses them and that God does want to forgive them. And so that's where we'll pick up tonight at VBS and that's where we'll pick up tomorrow in the teachings as we'll look at the forgiveness of Christ from Acts 26, 1 through 29 as we look at Paul's redemption, that Paul was forgiven, and he, he was the chief sinner. And so, but today I want you to just look at the life of the disciples, look at Matthew specifically from Matthew 9, 9 through 13. God was working. He had a good work for Matthew. He had a good work. We're going to talk about Paul tomorrow, but he had a good work in Matthew and called Matthew, and Matthew wrote, wrote one of the Gospels for Jesus Christ in the Holy Word of God that we have. And we know that he chose him and he loved him and that Matthew loved him back. And you know what? The same way that God loved Paul and that God loves Matthew and God loves Pastor Chris, that you call me that, Chris McCombs, I don't understand his love. I've not earned his love. I've not earned his grace. I've not earned his mercy. I've not earned his forgiveness. But he's given it. And even though I mean I understand the fullness of how he chose Matthew to be his disciple and all the other 12 and then all that would follow him and throughout the centuries how he chooses us, somehow we're chosen. Yet we're free and in our free will we come to the chosen predestination of Christ and it's, it's just this beautiful thing and how God's sovereignty and free will come together and they complement each other. And uh, I know there's a lot of theology books and there's a lot of people that divide over this issue, but that's how I look at it. Sovereignty and free will come together and we're chosen. And yes, we have a free will to reject or receive God, but God is also sovereign over that. And I think he's appealing and trying to woo us all. I don't think his wooing is irresistible because obviously some people just flat out reject God's love. But I want you to walk away. God loves you. Have no doubt about it. Listen, I, I think sometimes we just, we forget it. Maybe we just need to remind our adults. Maybe sometimes we don't feel his love anymore. Um, so I want to share this quick testimony, and then I'll end. I've been spending time with Steve Tharp, who's on his deathbed. I know most, most of you probably don't know Steve, but Steve always said, and uh, he used to sit on the organ side, and at some point he switched over to the piano side, but all the way back against the brick wall. And yesterday, he can barely talk. He's got cancer all through his body. It's going to hospice today. And we've always ended, I mean, and it's not that you all can't tell me this. You all can, and I would say it back to you. 
sometimes death brings us closer to, to things, but we'll always tell each other we love each other before we leave. And so I'll say, I love you, man. You say, I love you too, Pastor Chris. Um, and I think as I reflect back on him, I wanted to share what he did last night. He says, Pastor, as I was reading scripture to him, and I prayed over him, he goes, I want to say a prayer. I want to say a prayer. And you know, he, you can barely hear him, but I said, okay. I just held his hand. And he quoted John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. As of right now, if I don't see Steve on this side of earth again, those were the last words we prayed together. What a beautiful prayer. Just to remind ourselves, God loves us. Today, may we remind ourselves, God loves us. And I end with this like I always do every week. Remember these two realities. God does love you, and so do I. You take care. You have a good day. We'll see you tonight if you're working VBS. If not, I'll see you tomorrow here at noon for a word of encouragement. God bless.